Hi, I'm John Warren with Gilson Engineering. Today we're going to talk to you about the Siemens FCT-030 Mass Coriolis Flow Meter. Um, take a look here at our package. We have a, what we call our compact form, meaning that the transmitter and the uh, Coriolis tube are in one piece. Hardware-wise with the transmitter, we have dual compartment housing. Your field wiring is going to come into this location. And this is your local user interface. This is where you're going to interface with the transmitter and set it up in the field. This particular unit utilizes the Siemens uh, platform, so if you've used any of our other, say, flow products, level products, or pressure products, this will look very familiar to you. You basically have an up and down, left and right arrow to go through the menu structure. Right now, we have the mass view showing the meter tag, what the units are, and what the process value is. You actually have six different views that you can utilize, and we'll talk about being able to set those up. But as I come up to the unit, I can actually page through, look at my density, look at uh, uh, volumetric flow. I can look at multiple uh, parameters on one screen, uh, another screen with more parameters, and then also any alarms that might be present while I'm here. These are all configurable displays that you can do through the local user interface. So let's go into the programming and just show you quickly how you can get this up in reading flow. To get into the program, you're just going to hit the enter key, which is your right arrow key, and it's going to ask you for uh, either a couple different levels of passwords, and I'm going to declare myself an expert, and I'm just going to enter that value. To enter, all you do is use the local buttons to get the number that's appropriate, and then use your right arrow to move the cursor over. I'm just going to enter in these values. And the key to interfacing with this unit is to watch the green LED come on, and that's acknowledging that it accepted your input. Sometimes your thumb might be a little wide or might be slightly off, and it doesn't quite make the, uh, the input that you want. So just keep your eye on that little guy over there, and he'll let you know that the input was accepted. Um, there's a couple of different ways that you can go in here and establish what you want to do with the unit. I usually go down to the setup, now, some of your screens might be different depending on the firmware version that you have on the particular transmitter because that firmware gets updated from time to time. But basically what you want to do is establish what you want the unit to read out in. So if I go to Setup and go into Process Values, the first thing you'll see is Mass Flow. And this is where you're going to establish what engineering units you want to be able to use. And right now I'm in pounds per hour. But to change that or edit that, you simply hit the right arrow, drop into your menu, and you can arrow down to the different settings depending on what you want. I'm going to leave mine in pounds per hour. So once you have selected what you like, just hit the enter key, and it will accept that value, and you'll see what the value is stored over here on the right-hand side. The other thing you might want to put in is a low flow cutoff. Sometimes when that flow gets a little bit low, uh, you don't want that meter to be jumping around. You can actually enter a value in there. I'll just take a look at mine. Right now I have 1.5 pounds per hour as my low flow cutoff on my particular situation. Again, you can edit that just going left, right arrows and up and down to put that value in. I'm going to arrow out. So if you hit the back left arrow, that comes back out of the menu. And then you can see all the different uh, capabilities you have here for soft alarming. If you want to uh, have an alarm based on uh, either a high or low limit, these are all uh, configurable through that menu. And I can do that for all my values here. Get my thumb on the right side. So if I go down to volume flow, you'll see uh, in this case I'm reading in um, gallons per minute. You can do that for each of the process variables that you want to look at there. Same thing for density, uh, temperature, you can arrow through all these setups and basically what you're doing here is you're setting up all the values that you want to be able to read in, in the engineering units that make the most sense for you. Um, same thing for your totalizers. You have three totalizers on this particular meter that you can set up. They can be forward, reverse, net. You can also reset all your totalizers just by coming down. Say I want to reset them. Just select that value. Are you sure you want to do that? I'm going to say OK. Enter it. 
and it's reset the totalizers. I'll arrow back out of that. Here's where you're going to set your inputs or outputs. This particular transmitter that I have has one 4 to 20 output. And what we're going to do is we're going to go in here. It's going to say, hey, you have one current output. I'm going to select that and assign it to what process value you want it to uh, be related to. In this case, it's mass flow. But I could theoretically set that for temperature or density or what have you. Uh, direction, there's a positive and negative direction uh, based on which way the meter is installed. Uh, you can also set your upper scaling. Right now, I'm set zero to 7,000 pounds per hour. That's going to be my 4 to 20 in terms of mass flow. I'm good with that. Again, you can edit that value as necessary. Let's arrow back out. And again, it's just using the arrows, and this is exactly like our other Siemens products, to, uh, to go back and forth in the menus. So I want to get back out of there. Okay. Uh, one thing you want to look at is a zero point adjustment. Now this is suggested only for liquid applications. And what that zero point adjustment is, is you essentially fill the meter. You, typically you want to run it for about a half hour at your process temperature and your typical process flow. You close your outlet valve, let that meter make sure it's completely full of liquid, and then you're going to close your inlet. So now I have a meter tube that's completely full with no flow moving. It's full of my, say, vegetable oil, for example. And what I'm going to do is tell it, okay, I'm ready to go. I want to do a zero point adjustment. It's going to ask me uh, to select it. I always have that set for auto and what that will do is automatically make that correction for me. So we're good there. Arrow back. And I'm going to say, let's go ahead and start it. So I have my meter completely full of liquid and I'm going to go ahead and set it up. Uh, you can also determine the uh, duration of that, how long you want that to study that meter tube. Uh, right now I'm set for 45 seconds. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and start that. Are you sure you want to do that? I have my meter all set up and configured properly as far as the flow goes. And I'm going to go ahead and say yes or OK. And what you'll do is you'll get a progression bar here as it's sampling and making sure that that's a good uh, zero. And it will do the calculations here for you. And essentially, that gets rid of some of the play that you might see based on uh, some liquid uh, moving around in there, but it will establish what the true zero is for your process setup. And that's a very important uh, thing as this uh, unit goes through the zeroing is installation on a Coriolis meter is absolutely key. Um, we want to make sure we have no vibration from external process, so you want to typically have flexible lines coming into and out of the meter. Um, that way you can isolate it from pump noise or valve noise or something else that might be banging on your line. Uh, in this case, it took the adjustment, it says, hey, I'm good to go, and it zeroed the meter out. Um, but vibration is an absolute no-no on a Coriolis meter. And then on liquid applications, you want to make sure that you do not have gas bubbles or entrained air uh, in that flow. It's going to create a lot of noise. It's going to make for a very non-repeatable application. So you want to make sure that that liquid is just liquid and not a bunch of gas or anything like that that might be in there. So installation is absolutely key to have a successful Coriolis uh, application. So once we've done that, we've zeroed it out, we're good to go. I'm going to jump out of here. If I get my thumb arrow on the right arrow here, let's jump out. Uh, I'm going to show you maintenance and diagnostics. There's some cool things in here that will help you from a diagnostic point of view. I can go in here if you have to do some troubleshooting. There's uh, things like driver current, driver gain, uh, pickup amplitude 1 and amplitude 2. This can help you establish if you're having some issues with the meter. These values um, will help you establish what's going on there, whether you have aeration or something else going on in the process. Uh, these are key values working with uh, our tech service guys or your local Siemens uh, salesman or your Gilson guy. 
Um, this will help us determine what's going on with the meter. So these are all accessible through the diagnostic. Uh, the other thing I want to show you here in a maintenance menu is you can set the time and date and all that. But the important factor here is set to default. If somewhere along the, your process setup, you have a problem, you got confused, you're not sure where you're at, this gives you the ability to blow everything out of there and go back to the factory defaults. So if I would go down and hit OK, it's going to put everything back to the factory default and basically give you a clean sheet of paper to start over again on the programming. Um, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to arrow back out of there. Oh, sorry. Let's hit cancel. I don't want to do that. You can also restart the device. So if for whatever reason you want to basically do a power down and power up, that's your kind of restart button. So it will recycle the transmitter, uh, basically reboot it, if you will. And I'm going to jump out of the maintenance. Let's go back. Um, security. I would mentioned you've got a couple different passwords in here. We're able to establish different levels so I can basically give, say, the maintenance supervisor or the guys who really know what's going on access to everything. I can also give certain personnel limited access where they're able to adjust uh, certain parameters. That's under the user uh, pin code. Uh, you can also lock this guy completely up where if someone comes out and uh, doesn't know either of the passwords, it's going to let them see the parameters but not let them change anything. So you can put the values in there that you need for your application and determine who, who has control of that. Let's get back out of there. Okay. So right now, we're back in the operation mode. Um, you do have six different views, as I mentioned before, that you can configure. Uh, on there. That's another setup and you just literally select the values uh, that you want to uh, want to display. So that's completely programmable as far as local display. You have heart protocol capabilities out of this particular unit as well. So I can read those parameters like my temperature, my mass flow, my density, all that's available via heart. Uh, also you have one configurable 4 to 20 in this particular setup but we also have versions of this transmitter available that can give you up to three 4 to 20s and relay outputs if you desire. Um, if you have any questions or need additional information, please feel free to contact us at Gilson Engineering or visit our website where we have the manuals, data sheets, uh, instructional videos for all of our Siemens and our other product lines. Thank you very much.